Because Arjun was depressed, he was in dilemma, he didn't know what to do, and we go through life. We get confused. We don't know what to do. You need people in your startup who come, who are skilled, and they're willing to start working from day one. And they should at least be able to earn you double their salary. These are people who are high skill, high will. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, Chatur Varna Maya Srishtam Guna Karma Vibhagasa. It means these four Varna Ashram system is created by Krishna based on Guna and Karma, quality and activity. So the point is, money has many names. Lakshmi Devi has many names. So understand it and play, not the straight line, but the growth hack mentality. So don't think investment comes only in cash. Investment also comes in credit. Investment also comes in equity. Investment also comes in the form of favors. So if you can follow nature's law, and that's what the Bhagavad Gita talks about, you can work with the law rather than working against it and thereby be more efficient. Your knowledge, your lifestyle and working with nature's principles, you will actually be far more productive than most of your peers. Avilo is a thought leader, investor with humongous portfolio of 400 plus startups. He's currently the MD of renowned investment house, Kolkata Ventures. It's wonderful to be here and happy Janmashtami to everyone uh, for Krishna Fest. So I've been asked to uh, speak about how to use Gita principles in, in entrepreneurship. And uh, my first section I'll talk about is how to choose what kind of business to start. So a lot of times, you know, especially today with pandemic, everybody is stuck at home and you have access to the internet and laptop and your phone. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to make money sitting at home using the most powerful tool that you could probably have. And to be honest, many, uh, our, our Kolkata Ventures has grown almost 400% in the last one year because so many people are quitting their jobs and wanting to start startups, be free, be independent, work from home or work from Goa or work from the beach, wherever you want. And that opportunity has opened up to us. They have been pushed from the government, they have been pushed from uh, society. And, and I think this nine to five job thing is evolving into something that that is more uh, uh, free. People want to be financially free. People want to be free with what time they work, uh, how much time they spend on working, how much money they earn. They want to have control. And I think that's where we come in, guiding, funding, giving resources through Kolkata Ventures. Uh, and, and that has been very successful in creating 400 plus revenue generating startups, 4,500 new jobs, you know, uh, and, and we are in five countries now. Coming back to the topic, how do you choose? Uh, what kind of business you want for yourself. And the first thing is you should look at yourself. Who are you? Right? And Bhagavad Gita, Krishna actually starts by telling Arjun, you're not this body, you're spirit soul. Know who you are. Kontea so is reminding him, you're the son of Kunti, you know, you're the son of Pandu, you're from the great dynasty of the, the Kuru dynasty. So know who you are. Because Arjun was depressed, he was in dilemma, he didn't know what to do. And we go through life. We get confused. We don't know what to do. And, and that's where the Bhagavad Gita uh, starts. And that's where you know, I would like to also start by telling you first do self-assessment. Write down your top three skills, whatever age group you fall under. But at this point of your life, what are two or three things that you do better than others? It doesn't have to be Steve Jobs level, but at least you're better than others. Something you're gifted with. And two or three things that you're passionate about, whether it's cars, sports, spirituality, cooking, uh, music, whatever it might be. Here's what's happening. From the things you're passionate about, you would find out what your market you should go after. Who are the people who you relate with? When you relate with them, you can relate with their problems. Here is what's happening. Most people think startup business is about an idea. It's not about an idea because the idea is yours. When you start with a problem, the problem is theirs, the market problem. An idea might work, might not work. But when there's a problem, a dire enough problem, people are willing to pay to solve it. When you have a dire enough problem people are willing to pay to solve, then you don't need a perfect solution. You need a solution that's 50%, 70% there. And people will still pay for it because it's better than what is out there. So for example, think about Uber. All of us in all countries have faced this problem of cab drivers not wanting to go to some place that we want to go. Uber came in, gave you an app where you can bring a cab to your doorstep rather than you running after the cab. Even though it's a little bit more expensive, people go for it. And now I can use my Uber app in London, in Singapore and wherever I want to be and 
uh, it's the same app globally i can have my cab thing taken care of transportation solved so similarly you need to look at market problems what are some problems that people are willing to pay for if you look at the pandemic people are paying more for insurance now who didn't have insurance now are like scared if i go to hospital oh my god huge bills they're going for that people are paying for astrology because they're scared how's my life going to be am i going to live too long etc people are paying for mental health because being at home right so there are problems thanks to the pandemic that people are much more you know focused on paying for and you need to see what are some of those problems that you can also connect with and you're willing to solve now when you look at the passion part you got the market you got the problem now to solve the problem you're creatively thinking how do i solve it there are certain skills you will have maybe the tech skill maybe the marketing skill maybe communication skill and there are certain skills you don't have and you're wondering how do i build this even though i don't know how to do it that's where co-founders come in all right so you know what skills you have and there are certain skills you don't know you start looking around where can i find a co-founder with these skills unless you look unless you ask you don't get whoever you can find so this is not an easy process to find a co-founder somebody who matches your chemistry who sees the same vision that you do and has the skills with which together you can build this company now let's talk about the the more ambitious folks uh people who want to make a multi-million dollar business in that case it has to be a tech enabled scalable business now what does that mean basically that means this let's talk about app or a website right you build one app you build it once but it can be downloaded by millions of people and one change on the app and millions of people their apps get changed versus if you build a phone you have to you know you cannot just change the components because it's a real product it's a physical product every time there's a change there's a up cost and what not but in a digital product it's much much easier so tech enabled scalable business something that is scalability scalable means what your cost goes up as per as your customers grow but cost goes linearly in proportion with the number of customers but your value grows exponentially exponentially like this cost is going this value is going this with the number of customers why because the customers are referring other customers they're bringing in good work you know you're doing good work people are talking about you so your cost of customer acquisition goes down initially maybe it costs you 100 rupees to get a customer who pays 1000 rupees but when the customer brings another customer it doesn't cost you anything literally zero and somebody brought you another customer so that grows right and when you have a digital some way of having productizing it whether you're teaching math and science whether you're teaching music whether you're uh, solving people's uh, mental uh, issues whether you're a doctor and you want to uh, you know give telemedication whatever you want to do digitally if you want to have a multi million dollar multi billion dollar business you need to have a tech enabled scalable business moving ahead uh, what is the next step so you know there's a saying that you can have the best idea and the average team and you're bound to fail and you can have a okay idea and a great team and you're most likely to succeed bhagavad gita very beautifully comes in here because bhagavad gita does talk about the human nature the psycho that's a psychophysical nature of people very much so first of all if you are starting a business know that you're not infosys tcs where where they hire like lakhs of people and people are sitting there doing nothing or having the honeymoon period of 6 months where they learn how to do things you need people in your startup who come who are skilled and they're willing to start working from day 1 and they should at least be able to earn you double their salary right these are people who are high skill high will that means they are motivated they don't have to be told step 1 do this step 2 turn right step 3 you don't need to micromanage them these are self managed self motivated people who are skilled who have some years of experience and who can take you to the point where you need to go now understand this there will be people who are very good at interviewing right when they get hired then you see they were good at talking but they cannot perform happens a lot especially for you if you're doing it for the first time you don't know you're not a hr manager you don't know so you will make hiring mistakes hire slow fire fast remember that if you make a mistake in hiring do not let the cancer spread krishna in the bhagavad gita says chatur varna maya srishtam guna karma vibhagasa it means these four varna ashram system is created by krishna based on guna and karma 
quality and activity. So for example, I'm born in a Brahmin family, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a Vaishya by trade because that's my psychophysical nature. In fact, my guru told me I'm a Vaishya Kshatriya mix. Fantastic. Now that I know it, I know I, am, I have the leadership skills as well as the money-making skills that are required for me to be successful and I've chosen a profession accordingly. How cool would it be if you knew that? And that's why Gurukuls were there, right? Now, coming back to being a CEO, you need to slowly but surely build that skill of identifying people based on their psychophysical nature. Now, you might be like, oh, are you telling me to be racist or casteist? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is understand who are motivated by what. There's the, so let's change the names for a second. Brahmanas. Let's change that to intellectual class. People who are you know, scientists, who are scholarly, data scientists and whatnot. Right? So these people, they're motivated by learning and growth, personal growth. You appreciate them, they're very happy. Then comes the Kshatriyas. Let's change the name to administrators or leaders. These are like project managers, CXOs, who are highly passionate, motivated. What do they find motivation? Achievements. When they see themselves better than others, when you can make them look better than, you're better than others, that has a motivating factor for them. They always strive to be the best employee, the employee of the month, to get the best sales results, etc. So they're motivated by, you're better than others. Then comes the vicious, the money-minded folks. They're motivated by bonuses. They're motivated by money, basically. So the more money they get, the happier they are. This doesn't apply to the so-called the scientist intellectual class. You give them more money, they'll look down upon you. We're like, what do you think? It'll hurt the ego. But the money-minded guys, they're like, more bonus, I'll do more hours. I'll do more things. Then comes the shudras, the people who are governed by fear, right? Now, again, this is not a casteist comment. There are people who are governed by fear. They work better when there's pressure, there's fear of getting fired. And trust me when I say it, coming from a digital business background, I was like, where are these people? But then I'm a family business where we have factory workers and truck drivers and people I have to deal with who initially I was being, you know, treating everybody equally coming from America, you know, coming from a Vaishnav background with respect. And then other directors heard, oh, this Mr. Roy, He's not going to be able to run the company, you know, he's a complete loser. And then I started to be a little bit more harsh, you know, pretending to be more rigid. And they're like, huh, now he has matured up. I'm like, wow. So they want me to shout and yell at them, which is not my nature. But there are people you will find who are motivated by fear and they need to be treated in a certain way. Getting the right idea, business and the team. What's next? So the point is money has many names. Lakshmi Devi has many names. So understand it and play, not the straight line, but the growth hack mentality. Use the currency of relationship to get from point A to point B to point C to point D. You will not have the resources that you need, but you have to figure out who has the resources, how you can leverage them to come your way, to get sold on your idea and put forth the value. So don't think investment comes only in cash. Investment also comes in credit. Investment also comes in equity. Investment also comes in the form of favors. Investment also comes in the form of uh, um, intellectual property. And today with uh, our startup economy, with the push from the government, guess what? When you start, Amazon Web Services gives you uh, $5,000 worth of free hosting if you're in, with the incubator like Kolkata Ventures. IBM will give you free services worth thousands of dollars. If you, uh, uh, you know, Paytm will pay you one lakh a month uh, up to for their uh, Paytm gateway fees. So you will have at least 40 to 50 lakhs in services from Microsoft, from Paytm, from Amazon, from IBM, from Google, you name it. There are people willing to help you start your startup. So there is no reason why you wouldn't look that as money right? That's available to you for free. And the government pays you. The Atal Incubation Centers around the country, each one, uh, when if they select you, they can give you up to 10 lakhs. Uh, and if they tie up with the state government, they can give you 15 lakhs, right? I'm on the board of three Atal Incubation Centers. You can reach out to me if you need help. But the point is there's free money available. So don't just go begging to investors when you have an idea. Investors invest in execution. When you have built from zero to something, then investors come in at that something and see the potential and based on that they invest so you can make that something into something huge from a spark to a blazing fire. That's where investors come in. So start with zero money, 
grow with customers money scale with investors money the scaling part i was telling you tech enable scalable business investors invest in scalable businesses a minimum return on investment for an angel investor is 2x to 3x that means they want to triple their money for a venture capitalist it's minimum 20x they won't even talk to you if you're not able to give them 20 times their money back in a matter of three to five years uh, what to speak of companies like Zobato, crazy amount of returns on investment. So the point is, understand this principle. And before you go to investors, actually figure out the free money that's available for you using the currency of relationships. And I'm always there. I'm the only person in this world with this name, Avelo Roy. So you can always reach out to me on Instagram or in LinkedIn. I'll be happy to connect you with the right resources. We have to identify the problem. We have to identify the right side of people, and then build a team and then build build value structure into this thing and bring everybody together on the same board. So it may be a lot of things. So how to balance our mind around that? Sure. Um, so one of the first things, so that's where, you know, kind of spiritual aspect comes in because the reason why these people like Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg or uh, Satya Nadella are, are Corely spiritual people is because when you're a high performing individual, you cannot be living the common life and ex expect extraordinary outcome. And work life balance is a huge part of it. How do you manage a massive company as well as be a father, a husband, a wife, uh, a sister, or whatever, right? Uh, you have many roles you play. And uh, being a, a Bhagavad Gita student, what I have seen work is, is really sense control. Uh, a lifestyle, a yogic lifestyle really helps with that. I personally meditate two hours a day. One might think, whoa, that's a lot of time. But what it has done for me, it has opened up more time. I sleep six hours a day. So my lifestyle, I eat yoga friendly food, sattvic food. So it's easy for my body to digest. I don't sleep as much. I don't need that much sleep. I live a stress free life because meditation, two hours of meditation helps me focus. I'm very, very efficient. What somebody else will do in eight hours, I can do that in four hours or even sometimes two hours. Why? Because two hours of meditation helps, has over the last 15 years has helped me train my mind in such a way that it's kind of like, you know, as kids, we play with the magnifying glass, taking the sun's rays and focusing that on paper and burning it. Similarly, when you can focus the mind's energy on, onto something that's very important, away from distraction, away from all the pings and pangs of WhatsApp and social media. When you want to focus, you can focus, right? You, you see the amazing superpower you have that others don't have. And that's focused mind is a direct outcome of meditation. And another thing is understand, Krishna says that Nitya Ahara Viharascha. So you have to have a balance of Ahara, Vihara and sleep. So your eating, your sleeping and your entertainment has to be balanced. It is uh, important to entertain. It is important to sleep. It is important to eat right. So when you have a high perform performing lifestyle, you need to make sure that you're doing all of that. You miss out on many people, my generation, brag about not sleeping. And it is harmful because I have seen many, many startups, many CEOs burning out three days straight. They're working on their product coding hackathon and then they burn out. And by the time they're 30, their memory is down. They look older. They're, uh, you know, having diseases. Sleep is a hugely important aspect of life. And if you ignore that, you are screwing with your brain, which is probably one of the most important tools for your uh, uh, functioning. <laughs> so it's important that we have a proper balance, right? Krishna is saying, Nitya Hara Vihara. So when you balance for understand how Krishna or, or Bhagavad Gita describes time. So 24 hours in a day, eight hours, eight hours, eight hours. That's called Sandhi, right? So Sandhya, as we say, you see in most Hindu families, people are worshipping uh, in, in the evening, in the afternoon, in the morning. Why? Because these are Sandhyas, these are transitions in the day. So first eight hour is for Sattvic stuff, your worship, your meditation, charity, etc. The next eight hours is go, 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 Rajasic stuff. You know, more a passion. You need to get things done. You're working. And the next eight hours is Tamasic or rest, lazy. You entertain, you eat, you sleep, chilled. And you see the sunlight is also that way. In the morning, you know, it gives you a certain amount of light so you can do all your meditation and whatnot. It's chilled, it's calm. Throughout the day, you're working hard, you got everything. And at night, it's dark, it's time for you to rest. So if you can follow nature's law, 
in and that's what the Bhagavad Gita talks about. You can work with the law rather than working against it and thereby be more efficient with your